What is your worst experience with bad neighbors? We had some neighbors that used to leave their garbage out in plastic bags the night before garbage day instead of putting it in a bin. Around here, that's just ringing the dinner bell for raccoons and other critters. Sure enough come morning there's garbage strewn all over the neighborhood. What the raccoons and skunks didn't spread around. The wind picked up the slack. Some of the people on the street kindly approached the guy and asked him to put his garbage in a bin. He told them to go F themselves. Thus began the garbage wars. Every morning of garbage day some people on my street would collect all the half-eaten man rotten trash from their lawns and toss it back into the dude's backyard. He would collect it, then dump it back on their lawns, or cram it into their bushes. People started finding half-eaten burritos and candy wrappers in their mailboxes. The street started to look like a slum. Police were called, health inspectors, city by law enforcement. Each side was calling in whatever authority they could muster to get their enemy inch. The dude and his family, amazingly his wife seemed perfectly pleasant, lasted about 8 months then moved. Every once in a while I find a random margarine lid or piece of styrofoam in my hedge, and my mind goes back to those dark days of war. Apartment building the upstairs neighbor's dog peed on their patio and it dripped down onto me while I was sitting outside reading. I yelled and ran to shower and when I texted them to ask them to take their dog out to pee in future they said it wasn't their dog and it must have blown over from somewhere else. What? They were crackheads. They had two kids. Were physically and verbally abusive to each other and were hoarders on top of it. Tried calling child protective services and the police over and over and was never taken seriously. They ended up burning down their apartment and caused thousands of dollars in damage to the rest of the apartment building because they were cooking meth. We had to move out, as did many others. The silver lining is that they finally got their kids taken away after that. The matriarch of my crazy neighbors nailed all of the windows shut in their house, then removed the doorknobs and installed several dead bolts. This was to keep her grandkids home while she was at work, and everyone else out. Child welfare stopped by and were okay with this. The kids were able to get one window open without her knowing, and they would usually leave during the day and make it back before she got off work. Eventually there were maybe a dozen young adults living there too, and they all used the window as the main entrance. It unfortunately bordered my driveway, and was mere feet from my house. All hours of the day, people would be out there, wiggling in and out of the window. People got tired of being cooped up and major fights broke out. I regularly heard bodies hitting walls or furniture or fists. Yells of well stop threatening and get your goddamn gun already. I have PTSD. And it was just day after day of trying to keep myself calm. The kids had a pneumatic BB gun, a lookalike handgun, and one morning shot up my neighbor's car. She left to work at a hospital early in the morning, before first light, and didn't notice. When she shut her car door, all the glass fell out the windows. Later in the morning, he shot out a window in the school across the street. And a bit after that, he shot my husband in the shoulder. When we were outside planting flowers, he kept shooting. Even after the police arrived, the police called the matriarch, who unlocked all the dead bolts, took away the kids' guns and drug them outside so they could be cuffed and taken away. The youngest was maybe 9. Since no one confessed or ratted, and police weren't sure which of the three did it, they were released and not charged. Thankfully this act of physical violence against my husband got them evicted. After tearing up the house breaking all the windows and ripping out the electrical boxes and punching random holes in the walls, the kids went to the landlord's house with their lookalike handguns and shot up the windows in her house. Again arrested. But being juveniles, no repercussions. A couple of weeks later, her vehicle and garage were firebombed. But no one was charged with that. I'm so glad they are gone. I live in a wonderful neighborhood. Not rich by any means. But the most awesome people. But it's hard to enjoy the community with that going on next door. I hope they somehow find some peace with this life. Just straight up rednecks who wanted the full neighbor experience without putting in any effort themselves. It was like they'd moved from some hillbilly commune where you could just demand things of your neighbors. Every day when I got home from school, the three youngest kids would bang on our door until we gave them snacks. One of them, when denied snacks, came back and broke our glass door with a hammer. They turned the shared side yard, legally ours but shared because we weren't necessarily using it, into a lumber yard playground where they dug a massive pit for mud wrestling. No bullsh their mud wrestling. The second oldest kid, 
six in total, had an old AC air handle in unit in the backyard that he was allowed to hit with a sledgehammer when he got angry, he got angry often and had some pretty irregular hours. I ran into him at a bowling alley years after they moved away got kicked out went bankrupt. He had a tattoo across his chest that said immortal death in a black red black gradient. He also had giant scars all over his back, chest and arms he said he woke up in the middle of the highway on Halloween night. All cut up. Who knows if that's true, but if it could happen to anyone. He was the guy. A few more redneck activities because this comment is getting some attention. Lighting bottle rockets out of the tailpipe on their dad's truck. The youngest kid got stuck in the mud pit up to his head and they couldn't get him out for hours. On rainy nights they used to put these rusty cots in the front yard and sleep in the rain. That one didn't even register as redneck felt more like an Adams family thing to do. They somehow got their hands on what looked like municipal park playground equipment. One of which was a steel slide about two stories tall. One of the younger kids took a bike up to the top of it and tried to ride down but fell over backwards and smacked his head on the metal steps a few times. The mom watched him do it and I specifically remember her saying he's got to learn somehow after he fell. I lived in an apartment with slot of rotating tenants. An elderly lady moved in across the hall from me promptly started hoarding. I started to figure it out when her deck porch started to fill up with odds and ends furniture including but not limited to a roll top desk. She also yelled at me once for taking her key out of the front door and putting it in the mail slot. Anyway after a couple of weeks I started to realize I hadn't seen her in a while and started to smell something real weird. Turns out she had died and no one knew about it for a week hence the smell. Her family came and cleared out all her stuff about a week after that. This is Wisconsin in the winter and I had my good Doc Martin work boots outside my door because they were wet. They used one of my boots to prop open their door while they moved out and then stole them when they were done. A bunch of things with my ding dong neighbor. She had a large dog that hated my older, smaller dog. One day her dog ran into my yard and bit my dog. She did apologize for this one. Did not happen again. Neighbor dumped her lawn clippings into my backyard had to ask her to stop and clean up her mess. She decided to build a fence. No survey. So I paid for a survey of my property. She started building her fence 3 feet over on my property. I had her stop and remove the fence. She was angry and never rebuilt it. I painted my house. She painted her house. Same color. I bought a new car. She bought a new car same color. Same configuration. There's other minor stuff. But that's enough. Odd person. Very odd. He lived in the apartment right below my husband and I. It went from constant complaints to him calling the cops on us multiple times to him leaving threatening message on our car and front door. When we first moved in he was upset with the landlord for renting above him. Left plenty of unpleasant notes and interrupted quite a few times when we were talking to the landlord. When we moved in we only had a mattress and no other furniture but he kept calling the landlord saying that we were moving furniture around at 2am and had our TV at full blast. After the 8th complaint in 2 months of us still moving around furniture and TV being too loud we finally showed our apartment to the landlord. We literally didn't have a TV and still only had our mattress. Then the neighbor started leaving notes on our car telling us to keep it down and he even put in writing there needs to be no noise after 10pm or else I'll call the cops. We usually didn't even get home until after 11pm and we were respectful to make sure we kept things down because we knew that not everyone had our work schedule. So we tried keeping it down even more and there were so many instances when we'd be eating dinner or cuddling quietly, or even sleeping and he'd be banging on his ceiling our floor. After a few months he started calling the cops and it got to the point where even the cops told him to stop calling about a noise complaint because it's a landlord issue and every time they came they never heard anything. The last time they showed up I was asleep and my husband ended up talking to them and explaining everything. They suggested that we file a harassment complaint. Then the cops showed up at the coffee shop I worked at at the time and explained that they were getting almost nightly calls and they suggested to me to that we should file a harassment complaint against the neighbor. Then he started leaving threatening notes on our car and front door, and we kept hearing our door knob jiggle. He claimed that he and a friend had sat outside our apartment for 2 hours and listened to all the noise we were making. He's a retired cop and will call in a few favors if we continue making noise. 
He knows where we park our car so we better start parking it somewhere else if we didn't want it to get damaged etc. We kept the notes and made copies for the landlord and let him know that this was what we were dealing with so we're just keeping him in the loop before she started getting real lacquer we're tired of this and if an old guy gets his shrock then just know that it's been a long time coming. The last complaint was when he ran outside to the landlord screaming that something needed to be done about us because he heard our bed squeak the night before and how dare he rent to some crazy college kids who are partying and having sex all night. The landlord finally told him to f off and stop being a bitter old man. Then the neighbor took a total 180 and we found out that he had decided to sue the landlord and was moving. Suddenly the neighbor kept offering us rides when one of us were walking. He stopped complaining and leaving notes but our doorknob kept jiggling and turning at around midnight and whenever we would check on our door we'd hear someone running down the hall as we'd approach our door. He eventually moved away and shockingly we haven't gotten a complaint from any other neighbor in the last 3 years we've lived here.